<laughs> no matter how many times I do that, I still feel very nervous. <laughs> right, uh, I'm Jay, I'm from Aberdeen. You should come to Aberdeen. <laughs> and, uh, I'm saying Cyber Squadron can actually come to Aberdeen at some point. Uh, yes. Actually, I, I never felt a true Aberdonian until one day, just the pre COVID, somebody from Edinburgh called me in the, on the office landline and said, You sheep shagging cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was the day I felt like true Aberdonian. <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm going to talk about how a single email can topple an empire. Um, unfortunately, I, I, two great presentations, uh, Sue Nation and Ian, and unfortunately I don't have too much technical stuff for you. So, hopefully I'll share a couple of stories and then we'll, we'll, wrap, we'll wrap up for the night. Okay? So, can I ask you a question? What do you think the single most important thing the 99.9% .9 of businesses cannot operate without, without. Like a piece of technology. I think I already mentioned it. Email. Email, right? And email, maybe it was invented what, how many years ago? Probably. Before I was born, okay? That tells you my age. So, I still is the uh, you know, main entry point for the threat actors, right? So that's what I'm going to talk about today, and I'm hopefully I'll share a story we were involved with. Um, this was a business, a local business. I won't mention the names. They lost about three quarters of a million pounds. Yeah. Right. Before I do that, I, I need a help from you. I need a help from you, right? So, can you? Why? About what cyber crime types have caused the most financial losses? Let's see if you can get the answers correct. You, no, no, you don't need to put any details or anything. Just can and would. That's it. Kevin said I have lots of time, so. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I say lots of time. Sorry, what's your name? Martin, yeah. I play lots of poker, right? <laughs> <laughs> and my friends always ask me, what do you have? And I said, there is only one way to find out. Fucking <laughs> play. <laughs> right? Anyway. Um, so, yeah, okay, let's see the results. Okay, let's see who got it right. If you got it right. Business email compromise. <coughs> you would think I'm going to speak about business email compromise tonight, and that's why you're picking business email compromise, <laughs> right? You're well, like on one way. <laughs> <laughs> you're fifty percent correct. I'm going to speak about business email compromise, but your answer is not correct. Sixty-two percent of the people voted business email compromise. Twenty-three tech support calls, and. 15% is the ransom letter attacks. Zero is the investment fraud. Nobody thinks investment fraud is the biggest cyber cyber crime, right? No one? Right, it is actually investment fraud. Yeah? So according to FBI Internet Crime Report, last year's report, this year's report is due out in April, they Investment fraud amounted to $3.7 billion just in one year. It had a raise of 260% from the year before. I'm actually surprised. Nobody did. But the second one is the business email compromise. Business email compromise amounted to $2.7 billion. And that is only the reported losses across the globe about 22,000 cases, 22,000 complaints, right? That's a lot of money. And the ransomware amounted to 60 million, but there are two asterisks. That 60 million doesn't count for the downtime, the you know, whatever other costs, the recovery costs and losses and whatnot. The direct loss is 60 million. I'm sure ransomware would be a lot more than that, right? But <coughs> is the 
this yeah. legal compromise. So investment fraud, we don't have a dispute with that. It's mainly to do with the consumers. It's like a romance fraud, now crypto fraud and everything, you know, with the amount of 3.7 billion. So the reason we are here today is the um, business email compromise. Have you heard of this before, BEC? CEO fraud. Yeah. So back in the day, um, do you know how, how, why they call business email compromise? Well, it's, it's called business email compromise, but also known as CEO, CEO fraud as well. Yes. That's more yes. American. So CEO fraud, email compromise fraud, supplier fraud, email, you know, uh, supply chain fraud, invoice fraud. Yeah, there's so many acronyms. Yes. Loads, loads of different names, right? CEO fraud seems like CEO is trying to fraud. Yeah. Yeah, or CEO is a fraud, right? Um, but does anybody still use Exchange server here? Does anybody watch them? Uh, use Exchange, Microsoft Exchange server? Still? On-prem? On-prem? I feel part of that. I work for a nice service provider and some of our clients use on-prem. Oh, right, most right. high no worries, no worries. I used to be one of those guys, it's fine. I see. Yeah. Um, I worked with Exchange 2010. Right? Back in the day, so Exchange had this thing called Outlook Web Access. Have you worked with it before? Yeah. yeah, now we have you know, 365, you just log into 365, Outlook is right there. But back in the day, we used to you know, um, redirect the firewall, da 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 da, give it a domain name, any, over or go to the company name, you will log in. But it didn't have one thing. You know what it did not have? <laughs> no, two factor authentication. <laughs> right? So, if you can get somebody's name on the wedding date or the birth date or, or something like that, you can easily get a password. Or you can go to you know, uh, some of the breached passwords databases and you can get their password. And you, I'm sure we can easily figure out somebody's email address, right? Um, and you put in the details. You're in. Compromise. Your email is compromised. Nowadays, it's not that easy. Back in the day, it was uh, much easier. Sorry, uh, I don't. What is this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the Wi Fi. Keep on bugging me. <laughs> um, but anyway, I don't have any slides. Um, all I have is three slides. That's it. Right? So I'll just leave it here. So. <clears throat> Nowadays, it's, it's, it's much harder to compromise an email account, right? You have to factor authentication, you have um, you know, conditional access and, and whatnot. So many technical details, that's above my head. Anyway. Uh, so I think that's where uh, the business email compromise generated from, right? And uh, if you look at lots of small businesses, um, there are lots of victims, but not everybody reports these scams. And the amount I, I quoted earlier, only with the reported um, figures, right? That's about 2.7 billion, right? That's more than any other attack that's caused them in business, okay? So, what happens usually? Um, impersonation, uh, as, as, as you pointed, you know, somebody, CEO, you know, what's the company called uh, that makes the Barbie dolls? Mattel. 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 Anyone know? Anyone knows Mattel's story? Mattel was fetched business email compromise for three point five million dollars. I think that's the only company I know who got their money back. Wow! <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the money was not transferred to the secondary accounts, and they detected very early on. And uh, Mattel was a global company. And uh, they they identified the money in, the, in a Chinese bank, so uh, the Chinese officials uh, went into the bank and somehow got the money back. This was eight, seven or eight years ago. Yeah. And anybody heard of a guy called Hush Puppy? Can you tell who he is? He's a Nigerian. Right, right. Yes, I, I think is he a Nigerian or Ghanaian? Nigerian. 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 Yeah. This guy had 2.1 million followers, right? Yeah. On Instagram. A verified account. Yeah. Yeah. And he used to post uh, the photos of 
you know, Lamborghinis, Rolls Royce, Gucci's, Pradas, and this in Dubai. Yeah, <laughs> he lives in Dubai, and he used to post all this Prada, private jets, and whatnot. And he used to be, I think he was trying to be a motivational speaker or something, right? And all of a sudden, one day, Dubai police announces Hash Puppy is being arrested, right? You may have seen lots of movies and cyber crimes and whatnot in the movies. But Dubai police actually shot a video of his arrest and they put, him, put it on the YouTube. So when you go back home or when you have time, watch it. It's actually quite fascinating. I think it's about six or seven minutes clip. Um, the police goes into the hotel, you know, uh, knocks the door down and arrests him and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's still somewhere in the jail in, in America. It was ex uh, extradited to America and whatnot. But this guy, the whole story is, what he was doing is, the story was like this. He was sending fraud invoices to Google, Facebook, Microsoft, some of the top top organizations. And also, maybe some other companies as well. But overall, the news is, he has defrauded the companies about $100 million. Yep, and somehow they caught him, they arrested him. Rest in system, okay. So, usually uh, in, in Mattel's case, what happened is the CEO there. There was a CEO change in 2015. The outgoing CEO and the new CEO was coming in. When the new CEO comes in, everybody wants to impress him, right? <laughs> so somebody impersonates the new CEO's email and sends an email to the CFO asking for a confidential transfer of 3.5 million dollars. Because you know this is confidential, nobody nobody should know this transfer the money or whatever. But CFO is trying to impress him, you transfer the money, right? Usually that's what happens in businesses. Um, somebody impersonating the CEO or the CFO, uh, sending email to finance controller or CEO or CFO, sorry, um, or even um, as little as the threat actors, the bad actors can impersonate your employees and send an email to HR saying I'm having problems with my bank. Can you change my bank details? You know? Um, I don't have to tell you about gift cards and everything. You know? My employees even uh, my employees, my, my colleagues, they tell me, Jay, I got an email from you. They're looking for some transaction, but I know it's not you. I'm like, how? Oh. Because they're 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 too fucking polite. <laughs> <laughs> Just to display that I don't swear in the emails. <laughs> uh, but I'm not too polite either. So if any, anybody here received an email from me, from me, I usually sign off with best. That's it. I never say kind of words. Like net. Best. Yay, yeah, that's it. Right? So in a way, I think my colleagues can, uh, can figure out the email straight away. It's not coming from Jay. And also, they use my full name, J. Paul and D. C. I. S. S. T. The name for my LinkedIn. <laughs> Who would use all that? Anyway, right? So, the, the, the hackers are still trying. And unfortunately, unfortunately, there are lots of businesses fall victim. Yeah? So, this particular case. Let me introduce the characters. I'll try the Netflix thing. Right. <clears throat> so we have Roberto. Roberto is the kind of a guy who, you know, if he's walking through a shopping mall and he says up to 50% off, he just he just want to walk in and see what's what's going on. And when he walks out, when he walks out with two bags of clothes. <laughs> right? And we have Sophia. Sophia works really hard in a finance department. And she just wishes some point, some someday, she wins a lottery and just disappears into some sunset, right? So, I was in Edinburgh one day, last year, a um, few months ago. I won't mention the exact dates and everything. But I was coming, I, 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 I done my work and I'm coming back from Edinburgh, driving back to Aberdeen on a Friday, Friday afternoon. If you worked in IT or security long enough, you know, these incidents usually happen on a Friday or just before you go for a holiday. <laughs> I used to be like, you guys, I don't pay. <laughs> right? So, Friday afternoon, uh, my, my phone goes, right, 
who is this? Hey, Jay, um, we, we have an incident. Can you come and help us? Who is this? Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, we contacted Cyber and Fraud Center. They gave us your details. Can you come and help us? Right. Now? No, no, no. Uh, our IT company is helping us now, but let's, let's have a catch up on Monday and we'll take it from there. So, long story short, we had a, we had a call and we, we, we logged into the systems. Uh, what actually happened was, so Sophia at some point received the emails about Office 365 password reset or Amazon Vulture or something. I'm sure you all know about phishing emails, right? Or it could have happened that Sophia was using password she used elsewhere. But somehow uh, the attacker got hold of Sophia's password, right? And they, the company didn't have two-factor authentication. So they logged in. They managed to compromise Sophia's account. Yeah. As soon as they compromised the account, does anyone know what, what do they do the first thing? Hmm? No, the attackers, when they log in, when they compromise the account, what do they do? Yes. So they, they, they go through all the emails and they pick the target, right? In this case, they pick a specific target, just one customer, and then they set up the inbox rules, the forwarding rules. Right? So, and they were emailing the client from the original mailbox. Any emails receiving, Sophia never sees the emails. They're going direct to somewhere else, right? Because of the following rules. And they picked this one target. And that target is, you know, who that is? I told you, right? Why are you shopping? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why are those shopping? Roberto. So Roberto, what, what they say is, hey Roberto, you know, we have one of the invoice coming up. Can you pay us now? Roberto says, yeah, well, it's, the, it's not due until a week. Oh, we really mean the cash flow. Very, very bad. Says, all right, it's fine. I'll pay you. Right? He pays 150,000 pounds. Right? Oh, sorry. Uh, first email they sent to Roberto is, um, they asked him to stop all the payments. Can you stop all the payments? It immediate attack. We have we are going through an ERP system migration, and uh, the system is not syncing with the bank account. And our bank is not accepting any payments. Can you please stop? And we'll issue a new bank detail. Uh, meanwhile, so they issue the new bank details and then ask for money. We transfer one hundred and fifty thousand to start. And then, <clears throat> well, once they got the money, they will go go back again. Hey Roberto, can you pay the second invoice as well? Oh no no no, it's thirty days. You know it's not due until thirty days. Can you do that again? Uh, they say no no no. We, we need a cash. Uh, we have a cash flow problem. So if you pay if you pay right now, we'll give you ten percent discount. Roberto loves discount, right? <laughs> <laughs> right and <laughs> and he pays and then. Me and David, we were working on this incident on uh, a Saturday and Sunday. So we, David went through all the logins, all, all, sorry, all the audit logs, <coughs> this is my audit logs. We knew the attacker came in via VPN, uh, logging in through you know, some uh, IP address in Florida, right? Um, and I was going through, right, they, they deleted all the emails. They, they deleted all the history of the emails once, once the emails are forwarded. We can't even find them on the different inbox, so we can't find any of them. While we were having a conversation with the client, they said, oh, we have Barracuda email backup. Anybody work with Barracuda? Right? My, in my past life, for my sins, I worked with Barracuda Archive. There is a, well, I'm not sure if the, both products are same nowadays, but it's been, it's been a while since I worked on it. But the Archiver, Barracuda Archiver, what it does is, it takes a, it's a journaling tool. It takes a copy of every single email coming into the organization and every single email going up. No matter if you delete all your entire mailbox, your emails are still there, including everything, phishing emails, digital data, everything, right? So I knew for a fact because I worked with Barakud in the past. So I thought maybe I'll give it a shot with the uh, 
backup system. So we logged in then, you know, all the events are there, right? <coughs> and me and David were working through the, through the weekend to, to find out what's going on and um, write the report and whatnot. And they had cyber insurance, they were going for cyber insurance and everything. So we were thinking, right, this guy, Roberto, paid two invoices. And there's another email from Sophia saying, can you pay the final invoice, please? It's like, no, not pay. It's not due until six weeks. Come on, Roberto, we'll give you 12.5% discount. <laughs> <laughs> and me and, Rob, and me and Dave were thinking, oh, fuck, no. <laughs> we were too involved in this thing on the entire email threads. Roberto, no, no, no. <laughs> fuck no, right? And then we <laughs> see Roberto, yes, done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, that was, that was crazy. Yeah, we shouldn't be laughing, but we were, we were laughing our asses all the time. No, Sunday night, what, what can you do? Right? So, he did. And then, um, there's another email. By this time, he paid, the, all, he paid all the invoices that were, that were due. What else can they do? The threat actors, right? The bad actors, right? What, what else can they do? We thought, what else can they do? They can't do anything else. It's done. They paid all the invoices. They came up with a genius idea. Can anyone guess? Paid invoices. Hmm? Paid invoices. This, they have been paid invoices. Uh, well, not not paid invoices, but paid invoices. Paid bank details. Yeah. Anyone else? So what they have done is, they just still on to this customer, this one customer. We were actually surprised, they haven't moved on to any of anybody else. And they said to Roberto, Roberto, can you pay us 300,000 bucks? We'll give you 20% extra credit loan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what credit loan is? Yeah. yeah. So if Roberto pays them 300,000 pounds, then this company, has to give them 360,000 pounds of worth of goods. Right? Luckily, Roberto was so pissed off that he approaches, he said no. But one thing Roberto said was, oh, it's out of my authorization budget. More <laughs> 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 thing of If he had the authorization, he would have paid. <laughs> <laughs> the company would have lost a million pounds. But anyway, um, so that was, Three weeks before the call I received, right, the whole uh, conversation went on. But how the company got hold of, or how they realized, this was all happening, the company never knew what happened. So because it was all happening between Sophia, the accounts department girl, and then Roberto, who is the client, right? I don't think, it, I'm not sure if they chased for the payments or they, they spoken before, but nobody realized what's, what was going on, right? But the call we received was not for this. The call we received is for 155,000 pounds worth of dividends. Yeah? So, we, I received the call a few days after they, they identified the attack. So when we went in, we actually, I was trying to investigate the dividends issue, how they lost the money. But during our investigation, we realized the attackers were there since three weeks. They must have done something. That's when we dug deeper and then we found out a lot more stuff, right? But the dividends, man, so far this was well, kind of a straightforward attack. But when it, if, you, if you think about it, right, they've been in the system for three weeks. They, you know, they cleaned up this customer, all the invoices about 550,000, I think, or 500,000 pounds. And then they slowly moved on. I think they read, they, they investigated all the emails and uh, investigated the department, the names and everything, right? So this Sophia girl, she was working with four other people in the accounts department and the CFO, right? So the attackers, they impersonated everybody, right? Only Sophia's mailbox is real. Everybody else is, uh, the, the domain name is different, but nobody knew because 
um, the company's domain name is .co.uk. They created a .com domain. Um, with O replacing the zero, right? And then they created a whole um, uh, web of lies. Is that what, what's the correct English word? Yeah, English is not my first language, right? Fuck it. So, um, <laughs> so, whole web of lies, and uh, they, they, it, it looks like a big email thread. Like everybody was talking and authorizing this transaction, and it came to uh, Sophia's colleague, who is the guy that makes the payments, right? And it looked like CFO already authorized this dividend payment, and that this guy paid 155,000, right? And once he paid, he forwarded the email rather than responding uh, to the same thread, to the actual original email. By the time CFO checked the email, money has gone. And CFO came back, what's happening? I never authorized this transaction. Can you, there was one <coughs> amazing fact during the whole, whole email thread um, <coughs> between the authorization, CFO and everything. The domain name was changed at least three times in the, in the email thread and nobody realized. Right? And then they lost the money. And that's how the CFO came to know when the um, email was forwarded to the original proper e email. And they said, he said, oh, no, no, I never all this. And then whole hell broke loose and we got the calls and we got involved and everything, right? And we were speaking to, we were investigating. We, on a, on a Sunday, uh, Sunday night, nine o'clock, uh, the CFO, he, he had to cancel his holiday for Dubai and, and whatnot. And uh, we were having a call at 9 o'clock and we, we, we briefed him on what we discovered so far and whatnot. Towards the end of the call he said, Jake, you know, once all this is done and dusted, can you send me a proposal for your services? All right? You know, we, we want to get some con essential controls in place, our IT company is doing the 2FA, you know, do some reviews and whatnot. And I said to the guy, I sent the proposal 14 months ago. He said, nothing will happen to you. <laughs> this was a true story. <laughs> he was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, the insurance but, care. Say again? The insurance care. So they claimed the insurance. Uh, good question, very good question. So they claimed the insurance when they realized it was the dividend payments, 155. By this time, they didn't know about 500,000. Um, we don't know the stuff for sorry, because as soon as they claim the insurance, an insurance com uh, company called EY involved. Uh, you know EY? And then Ernest and Yann. They got involved. Yeah, okay. the, the, the English is something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, Ernst and Yang, uh, they got involved and um, we, we're still talking to the customer uh, but we don't know uh, if they got paid. Right. But I'll tell you something since you asked the question. There was a company in South Africa about the same thing happened. Right? So, similar thing. They paid, the, the account was compromised, paid the wrong guys as opposed to the guy who they were paying, the company they were uh, supposed to be paying. 5.5 million rand. Rand, right? So, okay. um, and they, they said, it's not our fuck up. You have you never paid us. Some, somebody impersonated us. So you should have the controls, right? Anyway, they, they went legal, and the court ordered the company to pay 5.5 million again to the, to the supplier because they didn't take the precautions to prevent the business email compromise. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, that's a good one. Uh, any other questions? There's a zero here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the punchline, the punchline is, uh, right, so, <laughs> Did anybody calculate the discount they had? Well, I didn't tell you the uh, whole number, right? So anyway, Francisco had about, about 30 percent, uh, so 10 and 4.5 percent. Overall, it came up to be 32 or 33k. 
So the company can still, this, this line can still claim that 32K to be paid from Alberto. That, not exactly, but that's about the same, same amount of money they spend on us. <laughs> right, so, yeah, they, yeah, you're, you're correct, we, we, we are at a zero. <laughs> <laughs> the 14 months before, the quotation was only about like uh, 3,000 or something, you know, <laughs> but it was now 700% more. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, well, it's, it's an active cyber incident response, so, and uh, we are a partner for cyber report center. I won't sell. Code of all that. <laughs> okay, um, I think I covered pretty much uh, everything, but you know, I hope you learned some lessons here. But I, I see some of you work for large enterprises or big, big companies. You know, it's usually with the bigger uh, or enterprise companies, there are resources, there are skilled people. You know, these attacks might look like some of you may have never heard of. Uh, some of you might, it may look like small, but there are lots of small businesses, they fall victim for this every single day, right? And some of them don't even say, don't even talk. I'm only talking about businesses, but do you know, these, these, the same thing happens in consumer, right? So people um, buying and selling uh, houses, solicitors, uh, emails were um, impersonated, you know, so, so many things happen, right? Um, yeah, so how can you prevent, um, one of the things, <coughs> as I said, bigger businesses might already have controls, but small businesses, there are still businesses with not even two-factor authentication enabled, because their users don't like it, <laughs> or the users complain, oh, I don't want to use my personal phone for company. <laughs> we have heard this a lot. So the fact that education is one of them, uh, educate, train employees of, you know, make sure they, they're aware of what's, what's going on, what the latest threats are, increase that culture, you know, conditional, um, conditional access, is it? Yeah, yeah. conditional access. One, if, if, if I can uh, give you, uh, if I want you to walk away from one tip, from my talk today is, one control you can have is, every time, Anytime somebody changes, somebody says, I'm changing my bank details, can you pay me into the new bank? Always, always verify. Always, even in your you know, personal life or company, um, wherever. Consumers or businesses, it's the same thing. Even the consumers, uh, we have seen a lot, 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 um, like changing bank details, transferring to <coughs> new bank, and all that. Right? So, um, the grammar mistakes and all that. I think there are much more tools nowadays um, that tools can actually tell you whether they, if it, it will suggest, oh, this looks like a, you know, a, somebody you never spoke before, or some of the tools actually block the impersonation emails altogether. Oh, I haven't been sure, totally sorry. Uh, this was only the incident I was involved in from TechForce, but in my past life, I worked as an IT manager, right? And um, that was actually the first time I came, came across these type of attacks. Um, well, I just said, right, I worked as an IT manager. But let's just say, somebody I know, a CFO, <laughs> <laughs> transferred the money. And uh, I was just sitting at my desk and everybody goes, oh, what's happening? I mean, my, my CEO was there, MD was there, what's happening? We were hacked, we were hacked. And that day I thought, fuck, I lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> and how much it is, it said 35 k um, So what happened was, my CFO was on holiday, and he was um, fished. So it's called whale attack as well, right? Spear fishing. Yeah. Um, the CEO, somebody impersonated the CEO's email, and sent him an email, uh, saying him asking for funds transfer, to transfer 35 k That's the first time I actually came across um, this, this type of attack. Right. This was ages ago, um, and that's when we we actually investigated the email spam filtering and whatnot. We went to some product it had like anti-spoofing protection, so anybody spoofs your domain, it just stops. 
So you can never actually send an email from the same domain from outside the company. Um, yeah. It used to be possible. You can spoof any, any email. Uh, I don't think it's possible these days. Mm -hmm. But yeah, right. Can I give you a tip on that one? Go on. Offer 365 plus the form of the next to get a cost. Yes. Good yeah. stuff. The junk it doesn't call. Yeah. You know, I have this guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, you looking for moonlighting? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay, so I think I have said everything I want to say. Um, if you want to hear more about sheep shagging story and whatnot, <laughs> you know, I'll be Alvin Brudo come over. And that day I felt like I was doing it. You know, I felt disappointed. I was like, how the fuck does he know? <laughs> With that, thank you very much. Any questions? Anybody, any questions? Any further questions? I think we've got lots of time. Sure. Hi, come on. I suppose the question is how do you encourage the culture of actually checking the emails? Because I've got a funny story, it's similar to yours. So I worked in tech support. And we get emails from users who are requesting account creations. And there was once a ticket I approached where I saw an account creation. I out of curiosity, I opened the email attachment and I realized that's from a non domain email address and no one noticed it. So, how the fuck, so how do you get like even technical staff, like hand help desk, to well, check their emails and actually if it's to have that culture embedded? Uh, Ari? <laughs> <laughs> So, so I think there's concepts relating to like secure by default and so guardrails can help users not need to do things that we might say that they should do. So if it's an internal help desk, why is it accepting emails that aren't the company domain, for example? That would be an easy way of instantly meaning that anyone on the help desk was never even faced with that threat vector. And so it's the, the concept of being able to cut off entire classes of attack vectors by basically designing our systems to be better. So it starts there, and then you have to fill in gaps that perhaps you can't engineer out of the systems, and there's always a trade off. And education is a part of that, but sometimes you don't actually have to educate people about a thing that when you can just remove it. You know, like MFA being default. Oh, but I don't like it. Doesn't matter. It's on. Yeah. You know, Google have did that across all other accounts. I think Apple have done it or are doing it soon. You cannot have an Apple account without NFA. The end. They have removed that vector. It now does not exist. When Google deployed UV physical keys across uh, all of their users, they didn't have a single account compromise. Again, as far as through that vector. So, you know, that there are methods that we can do that don't involve. You have to be able to tell one TLD apart from another and understand that Unicode can impersonate a character of the Latin alphabet. And, you know, no, you just, you're going to have a point where users quite rightly kind of switch off. Mm -hmm. So part of this is our problem of security practitioners and engineers to solve permanently. Like Microsoft enabling mm -hmm. checking email domain settings by default and not making it opt-in, that might help, for example or you know, removing macros from running by default, which they tried to do and then backtracked on. You know, they engage with the approaches to minimize the vectors of successful attacks. That's a long answer. But you, you, Thanks, Ari. You, you, you can't put the technical controls on yourself. Yeah. You've also got to make a living. So if you don't actually educate your end users to be sort of simple, because not all of them are, mm -hmm. yeah, you still be stupid yeah. yeah. regardless of how it's What you need and what you really need is buy in from the top of the organization to be allowed to do that. Yeah? So you can issue UDPs and all your stuff, but you need the CEO to turn around and say, yeah, okay, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. My company, my wife works for, they had a size of reach this week. Hey, what company is it? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> gained access to a 365 account for employees. They sent out four and a half thousand spam emails. 
in a day, yeah, um, and my wife had a lecture today saying, oh yeah, um, every time you get an email that you're suspicious about, you might have to put it in a folder, or an outsourced IT supplier will look in that folder and get kind of off it to see if it's a real email or not. And I said, well, how's that going to help you? He says, conditional access, multi-factor authentication, put those things in place, that wouldn't have happened. Limit the number of emails that somebody can send in a day. Yeah? Our CEO was like, oh no, no, no. Put your possibly dodgy emails in a folder that our outsourced IT guys might go and have a look at one day. So you're right, but the key is getting buy in from the top, and it needs to come from the top down. Do you ever find that the, most, the problem is actually at the top? Yeah, I'm sure. Because they're the ones that want to make sense. Sorry, I'm going to go that. The, the CEO, and I'm quite lucky because the CEO of the company I work for buys into a lot of it, but generally speaking, they're the exception. So my previous organisation, um, the CEO always wanted an exception. Well, he, he's not doing that. He's not having multi-factor authentication. He's not having a 12-character password. How do you find that? You can't. I, I, I respect that, that's where the box is. You, you don't have to. If he accepts the risk, that's it. I would say a yeah. method around it also I say to educate with example. Yeah. And I know a colleague of mine did this for a one of a global bank's divested to own banks in another country board who really didn't like the world, uh, yeah. those controls and they went, I'm going to come in and talk to you about some exciting stuff and they were excited. Mm -hmm. And what they didn't know is that he essentially brought in a rogue access point that mirrored the SSID of their bank login. They upped the antenna amplification uh, so that essentially every device in the room connected through it. And from that, cracked all their emails in the 15 minute intro section. So if they're going to get deep and so on, you know, cracked a bunch of their homes that were coming through, not all, because some were in to encrypted, but still more than they should have been able to. And we're like, oh, by the way, Janice is having a good day sheet. I was thinking, that's just someone's coding it. And you know, this particular individual is very cheeky, and he, he gets away with it, and, and they were horrified. And then like, the reason we could do this were because you're not allowing us to put on mobile device management on your device, because you don't like it. The reason we're able to do this is X, Y, and Z. And suddenly, Buy and buy and buy and buy and buy. And so it's education, you've got to change your approach for high net worth individuals, perhaps, or high power individuals, or those with perhaps less digital literacy. Where do you work? So that was when I was working for um, a managed service provider in Hemel Hempstead. All oh, right, okay. Um, we had loads of different customers. Some, this one was like a major care company. And because we had so many different customers, I don't think anyone thought to. Um, filter out the domains and set conditional access because uh -huh. at the same time the same the same sort of um, ticket system that we had the salespeople used to send and so they would have external people inquiring about potential sales and on the same system. So. Did you get the answer you're looking for? Yeah, I had the. the I'm answer. sorry, you can be my consultant. <laughs> 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 I think even with the training, the problem we tend to have is we have this sort of generic training uh, that we tend to send to everyone in the organization. Um, uh, many academic papers have been written about this that we shouldn't be having one training for all um, employees in an organization. Training should be sort of um, uh, uh, organized or um, created to reflect the kind of role that people perform. For example, in the work which you get, the guys working in finance should receive a different training from the guys working in IT. So I, I, I agree, there should be a generic one, but then in addition to that, there should be training that is specifically targeted to different divisions within the organization, because our tasks tend to be different, yes. you know, based on you know, what the people are, or what they do as part of their responsibilities. Absolutely, I second that. Uh, whenever uh, well, I'm not trying to sell again, but whenever we do help organizations, that's what we say. That first of all, the training or the security has to come from top. The culture has to be uh, coming from the top, right? And then the training cannot be same for everybody, right? Okay, the induction training, as part of the induction, 
you should train your employees for, for security, right? Um, and then the, the sh should be uh, customized for different departments. Because finance, they hold the keys to kingdom. If you lose the money, like look at the, this company that lost three quarters of a million pounds, right? They probably turned over what, six, seven million pounds, and then you lost three quarters of a million pounds cash. You know, uh, there is a stat somewhere, the 60% of the businesses who went through a cyber attack will close down in six months. Right? So the finance holds the keys to the kingdom. And then you have mobile uh, road warriors, right? Salespeople, you know, everybody is facing different threats. So the training should be customized. Uh, that, that's what you're saying. <coughs> but if you're looking for any white paper or any document, there is a book called Transformational Security Awareness by Perry Carpenter. It's, it's really good. Um, it talks about the changing the behaviors, not just you know trying to run the training uh, as part of a compliance or things like this. Anyone else? Okay. It's good, man. Nobody asks questions. <laughs> <laughs> good. Thank you.